In another video, we wrote some software that allowed us to drag images from our computers to a web page and display them on a 16 by 16 pixel matrix. A popular request in the comments has been how to modify the software so that it can display animations. Today, I'm going to show you how to modify the Arduino code so that you can drag and drop multiple images and display them on the LED matrix at a particular frame rate so that it can form an animation. All right, let's do this. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. They're currently offering their PCB assembly service with a discount of 65% for their SMT fees for 1 to 20 pieces. They offer a great deal of options for your PCBs and the resulting quality of their products is great. With friendly staff and great facilities, I highly recommend PCBWay for your PCB manufacturing and assembly needs. For the project, I'm going to use a Wemos D1 Mini development board for the ESP8266. I'm also going to use a prototyping shield, a 2x1 baseboard so that I can connect the two boards together without the needs of wires, an 8x8 matrix of WS2812B LEDs on a flexible PCB, and a JST wire to connect the matrix to the ESP8266. As usual, all of these components can be found in my little Amazon shop. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. Assembly is straightforward. I need to do a little bit of soldering, and for that purpose, I'll use a half size breadboard to straighten up the pins. You can follow along the process or skip ahead if you're ready to look at the software side of things. With the hardware assembled, I'll go ahead onto my GitHub page and download the demos for the ESP8266 repository. I'll make a copy of the web server JPEG WS2812 project onto my desktop. If you want more details as to how we built this code, I invite you to look at the video for that project. For now, I'll make sure that we have installed the two libraries that we use in that video. With the libraries installed, the first thing I'll do is change the remapping array to match the size of the matrix that I'm going to use. Similarly, I'll change the number of pixels as well as the pin that I'm going to use for this project. I'll go ahead and fill out my network ID and password so that the ESP8266 is available over Wi-Fi. So the only real changes I need to make to this code are for dealing with multiple images in sequence. So for that purpose, I'll add two new routes, one for playing the sequence, one for stopping the sequence over the web server. Next thing I'll do is build a user defined function that will be in charge of iterating through all the images in flash memory and sending them to the matrix. To keep things simple, I'll assume that those are the only images in flash memory and they will be already ordered in sequence and use the JPEG extension. You can modify this and make it more complex according to your own needs. With that function done, we need to enable our web server so that it can call it whenever it needs to. To do that, I'll work on the handling functions that are called whenever the web server routes are requested. I'll start with a function that we want to call for playing a sequence, but for now I'll leave blank the part where we actually call the play sequence callback function. 
You'll see why in a second. I'll do more or less the same thing for the function that's requested for stopping the sequence that's being displayed. One difference is that whenever we stop a sequence, we want to make sure that the matrix is cleared and all the pixels are off. The reason I didn't quite call the display function is because I want to show you how to do that by using a scheduler. I'll need to include an additional library. I'll make sure that it's installed by using the manage libraries option. And in order to use the scheduler, I'll need to declare a few things. First, a prototype of the function that we're going to be running for displaying the images. Then an instance of the task class that will be scheduled to run inside the loop function of our code. Lastly, I'll need a scheduler instance that I'll name runner, and that's the actual object that will be running every task that we assign to it. In the setup function, we'll assign all the tasks, in this case, the playing of the sequence in memory to the scheduler object. What this allows us to do is to go back to the functions that are called by request to the web server and simply enable or disable the tasks that are going to be constantly monitored by the runner inside the loop function. So for running the play sequence callback, we'll enable the task and for stopping it, we'll disable it. The very last thing we'll need to do is to go into the loop function and make sure that our task scheduler is always running. So with those changes done, we can go ahead and connect our board to the computer's USB port, go to the tools menu and select the corresponding board and corresponding port, upload the code, and start loading onto flash memory the things that we're going to need. First, the web page that will allow us to simply drag and drop the images that we want to display in the matrix. I'll simply start with the blue, green, and magenta examples that we had from before. And after verifying that they're indeed in flash memory, I can go ahead and visit the play route that we created so that we can see it displayed on our LED matrix. We can then go to the stop route to stop the animation. And with that done, it'll be interesting to see how we can display something like a fire animation. To do that, we'll need to create images from the video and I'll show you my preferred way, but there are certainly others that you can use. Let me know in the comment section if you have anything better. I typically use Final Cut to modify and manipulate the video so that I know it's gonna display correctly in the LEDs. Remember that the images will need to be 8 by 8 pixels and I had trouble exporting videos that were of this size, so I'll just go ahead and use the native resolution. After doing that, I'll load the exported file onto VLC and going through the preferences, we can extract frames from the video. If you go to the scene filter part of the video filters and modify the options according to our needs, we can close the application and reopen it to create those frames. With the video frames created, we'll need to resize them to be exactly 8x8 pixels and to do that, I'll use Photoshop. This allows me to do it in a batch fashion, but again, if you have a better method, by all means, let me know in the comment section. So finally, with that out of the way, I'll need to delete the old images that are in flash memory of the ESP8266 upload the new ones and use the play route to see it in action. At first, it might not look like anything, but if you turn off the lights and add a little bit of diffusion, you'll see a much better effect. When you start doing this sort of projects, you'll notice that the color of the LEDs don't quite match the colors on the images. I'll leave a link in the description of the video that tells you more why that is but by simply adding a correction matrix, we can certainly improve this artifact. We'll also make sure that the values in this matrix are being used by our display function. So when we re-upload the code and visit the play route so that the animation starts, 
we can see a much better version that matches the video as we saw it on the computer screen. So there you have it. We've seen how to take a sequence of images out of a video, load them onto our ESP8266 and have them displayed as an animation on our WS2812 LED matrix. If you like my videos, I invite you to my Patreon page where you can chip in a buck or two that really helps me put in more time into the videos and release them quicker. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe or leave me a comment. You can also interact with me on social media, I'm on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook and you can even use the community tab of the channel. Thank you for watching my videos and I will see you next time.